Charles Payne had a discussion today about hedge funds losing in 2022, all while individual retail investors are continuing to hold. Let's listen in to what Charles had to say, and then I want to mention a few things after that. Meanwhile, as Wall Street continues uh, its, its retail investor death watch, we're learning more and more that it's actually hedge funds that are in a whole lot of trouble. In fact, according to one analysis, 2022 has been the worst year ever for hedge funds. Now they turn to massive shorting to try to make up those losses. Meanwhile, as the retail investors, they've cashed, they've got very little cash in their Charles Schwab accounts, and their exposure remains pretty elevated with respect to where consumer sentiment is. In other words, they're still hanging in there. We've got a lot to chew on. So well, it's been a tough year for investors of all stripes, right? Uh, and now all eyes are on younger investors or folks who just entered this market since 2020. Now, Wall Street is saying that this batch of investors must blink, that they've got to take even heavier losses. Well, they actually have to realize the losses, bite the bullet. I think, though, Wall Street is underestimating the resolve of retail investors. Joining me now is eToro USA investment analyst Kaylee Cox. And, and you know, Kaylee, it's, for instance, this AAII allocation survey comes out every week. It's interesting because it remains very really elevated. It's down just a little bit. And you put that on the same chart as consumer sentiment. And you say something's got to give because they used to trade in tandem. And I know eToro does its own surveys. I know you had one in March. So why are retail investors staying in there? Why are they hanging in there, even though Wall Street keeps saying that they've got to, uh, you know, bite the bullet? Well, first, I agree with you, Charles. I think we're underestimating retail investors here. And I do want to note that the AAII survey data was pretty bearish up until a few weeks ago. So investors haven't exactly been naive about this drop. But look, retail investors have a longer time frame naturally. And we are seeing a younger investment base out there. Naturally, younger investors have higher risk appetites, and they've been shown to flood, flood into stocks and crypto. So I wouldn't rule them out just yet. Um, you know, millennials are coming into their economic power. And, you know, these younger investors, while they might not have as much cash on hand, they might have more resolve than you think. Yeah, and here's the thing. I know, I mean, historically, we're told to buy low, uh, you know, buy low, hold, and sell high. Uh, you know, people have listened to that their whole lives, and they're saying, why should I sell here at the low, particularly to your point, if they're, if they're younger investors? So, I mean, isn't history on their side? Yeah, and I'll add, too, look, they're, they're more educated than ever, too. They lived through the great financial crisis and the bull market after that. And history is on their side. I mean, we know that now more than ever. Stocks have recovered from every crisis that they've been through. And there are constantly communities we're seeing, um, you know, chanting by the dip, chanting hodl. And not, not for bad cause, right? I mean, that's, that seems to work out if you have time on your side. And that's the big if. But luckily, retail investors, most of them do have time on their side. What's your thought now on recession? Uh, are we in a recession? Do you see us? Uh, do you see that impact in this market? Yeah, so there are warning signs. I'm certainly not going to step out here and say growth, <laughs> growth looks decent here. Um, you know, growth is slowing, but I want to warn everybody, you know, slowing growth doesn't exactly equal a recession. And we have reasons to feel optimistic, too. Companies Company earnings are coming in fine. Companies are reinvesting in their businesses. You know, I think it really depends on the Fed now. We're mm -hmm. watching the Fed closely, especially as the narrative slips into a recessionary narrative, to see if they change their messaging. Because if that's the case, we could see markets uh, back off from these rate hike expectations a bit. What would do that? What would do that? Like a, a benign CPI print or something like that? A relatively benign. Yeah, that's benign. a really good question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all it's all relative, right? Yeah. So that's a really good question. You know, I think that I think that the signs are already there, and I think that even if the Fed hints a little bit of the fact that inflation may have peaked, um, just some progress there may right. be enough signs for the market to take back on these tightening let, financial conditions. Let me ask you about the the economic. Uh, Fed just released their economic well-being uh, U.S. household surveys for the fourth quarter. Twelve percent of adults held uh, crypto or used it. Ninety-nine percent. Uh, holding it as an investment, uh, actually have a bank account. So this suggests that, to me that people are really looking at this as a legitimate, authentic, long-term investment. What percentage of them are you, are you, do you see now buying the dip? Yeah, that's another really good question. And obviously, we work for a brokerage, or I work for a brokerage that offers crypto. So we have a bit of a biased view. 
But in the survey that we ran in March, about 90% of investors ages 18 to 34 were planning on investing more money into crypto over the next 12 months. Wow. So we think here, especially with Bitcoin at these levels, with Ethereum at these levels, you know, we could be seeing a lot of investors buy the dip. I mean, certainly institutional investors are going out and doing that. We're just telling customers to really remember the utility in crypto. Um, I don't I don't want to say flight to quality here. I mm-hmm. feel like that's just a little wrong yeah. for the crypto space. But, you know, there are cryptos with the utility and with some asset ties to them. So you still have to be very uh, distinguished when you're when you're kind of looking through which cryptos to invest in. Yeah, it's 12,000 of them, but we get what you're saying. Uh, you know, go, go with the, uh, you know, Ethereum, go with Bitcoin. I'm putting words in your mouth only because we got a wrap here. But more importantly, <laughs> 90% looking to buy the dip. That's what I call diamond hands. Kylie, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes. With the proper time horizon, individual retail investors have nothing to be concerned about. If we truly believe in the future of our favorite companies, then those companies' stocks should be even more attractive to us when they're at a discount. As for us retail investors, it costs us nothing to simply hold on to the stocks of our favorite companies and wait patiently. Meanwhile, short selling hedge funds do not have this luxury. Every day they hold on to their short positions, they are beholden to maintenance requirements and they have to pay interest fees in order to continue holding their short positions. What's amazing to me is how the narrative among much of the financial press frequently changes but yet always finds a way to blame individual retail investors. Just recently, we were told that retail investors are the reason for the entire stock market entering bear territory because we were not selling. By the way, that's absolutely ridiculous because buying and holding stock does not cause the market to go down. If anything, that should be helping to support the market. And within a matter of days, that ridiculous narrative suddenly shifted to meme stocks are over and retail investors have capitulated. And then I kid you not, the narrative changed again, contradicting itself by claiming that retail investors have not yet sold, but that we have to sell and capitulate in order for the markets to finally reach a bottom. You can't make this stuff up. I will say, with all of the ridiculous, ever-changing narratives, narratives in certain segments of the financial press, I greatly appreciate Charles for keeping it real and giving it to us straight. He's preaching the same message today he was months ago. Retail investors are holding, big money is selling, and bear markets are something we all have to go through, but they do not last forever. That's what he was saying months ago, and that's what he's saying today, and I agree with him. As I often say, we retail investors are going to continue supporting our two favorite companies, AMC and GameStop, as we stand up for a free, fair, and transparent stock market. We want market makers and large financial firms to be held accountable for their actions. We want retail investors to have access to the same real-time data from exchanges better private feeds, which is currently only available to Wall Street firms. And we want all of retail investors' orders to be routed directly to lit, transparent exchanges rather than opaque dark pools. Ultimately, we just want a stock market that offers a truly level playing field for all investors. And that does it for this video. Please leave a like on this video so we can get this information out to as many people as possible. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps us out tremendously. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video.